Okay, so carrying on with our hand scan tutorial series, uh, we're now going to do some animation. This is where we left off in the part one, where we basically drew the different elements and uh, colored them and uh, placed them in the correct places and so on. We now want to go ahead and um, do the animations. And uh, there's sort of two levels to this. Uh, the first level is just uh, the animations to reveal the different elements. And then there's also going to be some secondary uh, animation just to keep things moving and uh, maintain some kind of uh, visual interest. You'll see what I mean as we uh, go along. So we're going to start with the main section here, uh, this big uh, block. Uh, and that was shape layer number one over here. And uh, I need to scale this into the scene. And uh, we need to do this from the center uh, of this shape. Uh, so if I go to the tools here, I want to get the pan behind tool. And I want to move my anchor point to the center of this shape here. And uh, a quick way to do this is to hold control on your keyboard. And that's going to snap to the center like this so that now when I scale this up and down it goes from the center. Let me just uh, zero out my uh, starting point to zero so the frames are easier to read here and I'm going to go to scale and uh, set the first keyframe and this is going to be zero and I'm going to move forward half a second which is uh, 12 frames in my uh, 24 fps timeline here and uh, set the scale back to 100. So just a basic scale effect. Immediately after this, I want to bring in this uh, scanning section. So that was one of the shape layers, I believe. And uh, it's shape layer 3 up here. I'm going to right click this and uh, pre-compose it. First of all, let's just call it uh, scanning border. And uh, I want to get the rectangular mask and let's just draw a rectangle around this go to the mask path and uh, if i go to one second i'm going to set the first keyframe here go back to 12 frames and uh, i'm just gonna make this smaller and i'm gonna hold control as i do this to bring it in uh, from both sides back into the center so it's just going to be this uh, sort of simple reveal effect and I'm going to feather this by uh, 50 pixels so it has a nice soft edge. So as soon as the main element comes in, this then uh, sort of animates on as well. And now uh, we only want the scanning text to appear after that completes the reveal. So it's going to be something like this. Then the border comes on and then the label switches on as well. Next up, I want to deal with this uh, circular elements. For this actually I'm going to go back into the original comp and uh, we basically want to do a reveal where they sort of spring in from the center. So if I go to shape layer 1 uh, I'm going to animate on the scale again. So just set a keyframe, set this to 0, move forward 12 frames and set this back to 100. So just a basic uh, scale animation again and uh, I want to copy this and paste it to the other three layers at uh, frame zero. So all together it looks like this, but we want this to look a bit more interesting. So I'm gonna go to the outer most layer. Um, that's the one I want to come in first. So actually if I select uh, layer three, two and one, uh, starting at zero, I'm gonna frame advance four times using the page down key on the keyboard and move this three forward. Do the same again, uh, but this time move two and one. Frame advance four more times, and this time just move layer one. So it's just this uh, four frame offset on one layer after the other. And uh, this just looks more interesting than all of them coming in at the same time. Okay, I also want these uh, different sections to be rotating. And for that, we're going to use some uh, expressions. So if I go back to shape layer number one, 
I'm gonna press R for the rotation and uh, hold ALT on the keyboard and left click uh, rotation to enable uh, the expression box and I'm just gonna type out time times 100 uh, which basically means whatever the time is uh, it gets multiplied by 100 and that's the value that gets fed back into the property so we have some continuous rotation throughout the whole duration of the comp. I'm going to go to the next layer, bring up rotation on that layer, and uh, again I'm going to enable the expression, and this time I'm going to type out time times minus 10. And uh, what this does is it's a lower number, so this is going to be rotating slower, and also in the opposite direction because of the negative signage there. On to layer number three, I want to rotate that in the same direction as one, but uh, at a different rate. So I'm going to go for time times maybe just 60. So it's moving in the same direction as shape layer one, but uh, it's at a uh, different speed. So these bits won't always be uh, lined up. And uh, the last layer, uh, number four, I'm just going to do the same time times minus 60 this time so it's going in the opposite direction and when all of that is finished this is what i have much more interesting than just still elements okay back to the elements comp we want the first set of circles to appear after the main section comes on so that starts at uh, frame 12 so let's move everything to there and uh, here we're just going to do the frame advance again and just offset everything by four frames at a time. So one, two, three, four. And uh, do the same for the next and the one after that. And uh, so when you get the idea, now you could be using a uh, different offset depending on how slow or fast you want your animation to be uh, overall. So that's it for the circular elements. Uh, let's move on to these uh, fingerprint containers. And uh, that's in this comp. I'm going to select the four corner shapes here. Press S for the scale. Move to 12 frames and let's keyframe this at 100. Go back to zero. And let's, and, uh, let's uh, zero this out. So we just have this animation where everything comes from the center. And again, let's do the offset. So if I advance four frames, I can move this layer, move forward another four frames, and uh, by now you get the idea. So it looks like this now. And uh, at one second, which is uh, when the last piece uh, rests in the corner here, I wanna get shape layer five and animate the opacity starting from zero over half a second to 100. So after the four different corners come in, that border then fades in as well. In the elements comp, let's uh, get these containers. And uh, four frames after the last circle element, this is where the first container is going to start uh, unfolding onto the frame. And continuing with this uh, pattern, we're just gonna offset these by four frames again. And uh, if we just review what we've done so far, the main element comes in, uh, followed by the scanning section, uh, and then the circles roll out, and then the containers start to appear. Now, before these containers appear, we need this green bar to fade in. So if I go to shape layer 2, which is that green bar, uh, I want to pre-compose this. It's called this right section pre and I'm gonna get a rectangular mask just throw a mask around this and I'm just scrubbing through my timeline uh, one and a half seconds is when these containers start to come in so at this point this needs to have uh, appeared so if I go to the mask I'm gonna go to mask path and just uh, set a keyframe go back to one second and uh, I'm just gonna pull this mask to the left there. Let me center my screen here. So now this uh, reveals uh, this sort of wipe effect 
and then the containers start to animate in. Let's uh, feather this mask though. I'm going to go with uh, 50. So we have that nice soft edge. So the fingerprints are already there uh, from frame zero. We we'll need to animate those in as well. And uh, the cue for these fingerprints to come in is when the last corner passes the point where the fingerprint is. That's when we want to start fading the fingerprint in. And uh, in my particular timeline, that's going to be at uh, 2 seconds and 4 frames. So I want to get all of the fingerprints. Let's bring them all to at least that point. Press T to bring up the opacity and set a keyframe. Move ahead 12 frames and set the keyframe for 100%. So here is where it would be zero. And this need to be in the same order as the containers, basically. So the first fingerprint is already in the correct place. The second one is way down here. So let me put this at the top and just try and order this correctly. And this is the second one I'm after. So that needs to go down here. We kind of go in up. So this is the first, second, third. Uh, and so on. And uh, again, I'm just going to offset this by four frames at a time. So one, two, three, four. And uh, now when I scrub through this, the fingerprints come in one by one in order. And uh, also at this point, this is when this text would switch to saying unlocked instead of scanning. So let me enable this text and quickly bring it to where it needs to be. And uh, we can trim where this layer ends just there and it would then just switch to say unlocked so that's nearly all of the animation finished the last section is this hand print there's actually two hand comps here one is blue and one is white and uh, we're going to use both for the reveal effect uh, so if i start with the blue hand i want to draw just a rectangular mask like this and uh, at one and a half seconds, this is where the last keyframe is going to be. So if I press keyframe uh, on the mask path, go back to 0.5 seconds. And uh, I just want to make this smaller, basically, to the left here. So this wipes in the same direction as the circular elements, which sort of, you know, scan the fingertips. I want to feather this by, say, 50. So we have that uh, nice soft edge. Then I wanna basically copy that mask, go to the layer with the white hand and uh, paste it here too. So if I paste it, now they appear at the same time. But on this uh, second layer, uh, I wanna press U to bring up the keyframing. Go to the last keyframe and uh, I just wanna pull the other side of the mask to pass where the last finger is here. So something like here should be fine. And uh, when I do that, now we have uh, sort of this white strip ahead of the rest of the reveal. And uh, that just looks more interesting than just a straight up wipe effect. And uh, that's it. That is all of the animation done uh, for all of uh, the different elements. A suggestion I could make at this point uh, to just randomize this uh, a bit more is to, for example, go to each of the circle comps here and just rotate it slightly, uh, each one by a different amount, just so that uh, the starting point of each circle is uh, different, so they don't all just line up and rotate uh, exactly the same. Okay, so let's now go back to the main comp just to see what we have. You can see I need to line up the in point of this to where my camera starts, which is uh, at 2 seconds and 8 frames. And now it looks like this. Let me just do a quick RAM preview for that. So pretty cool. As soon as the 3D camera disappears, uh, this just ends up floating awkwardly in front of my hand here. So let me actually animate this out before that happens. Um, 
at this point in time, I'm going to set the opacity to zero. Go back two frames, set it to 100. Go back another two frames, set it to zero, and then another two back up to 100. And uh, just another RAM preview, and now you can see that uh, everything works, uh, everything is tracked correctly, and uh, this animates in very nicely, and uh, animates away with uh, no problems. I'm going to do just uh, a small amount of uh, blending here. Two things, I need to do some uh, color grading, uh, we'll do that last, but uh, also if you look at this, the graphic elements here are very very sharp compared to the footage. If you remember, uh, I told you that my footage wasn't that sharp because uh, the person filming uh, did not set the focus point correctly. And so really I should try and match the level of sharpness on my graphics as I have on my actual footage. So if I go to the layer, I want to go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and let's have Gaussian Blur. And uh, here I just want to set the blurriness to something like maybe 3. So that's quite a lot, uh, but in terms of blending in with my scene, that looks more accurate. I can also maybe take this whole thing and just uh, make it uh, dimmer. So instead of opacity going all the way up to 100, let's go for just 60. And uh, it means I have to adjust these uh, keyframes over here. And uh, that's fine there. I can get an adjustment layer. Let's go to Effect, Color Correction, and uh, I'm going to start with a simple levels adjustment and uh, maybe just create a, a bit more contrast with this. Maybe darken the scene slightly. So just a quick before and after. Nothing too complex. I want to go to color correction again and let me get the color balance effect. Uh, if we go to the shadows here, let's uh, take away some red to make this whole thing a bit more blue and maybe inject some more blue into the shadows to uh, make that even more extreme. Uh, maybe in the midtones we can put in some uh, green and uh, in the highlights uh, we can just play around until we get something which looks kind of cool. Uh, maybe warm it up in the highlights a lot. So something like this should work. And I think that should be it. I can uh, re-expand my entire work area uh, and just do a full run preview and uh, watch the final result. And uh, there you have it, this really cool looking hand scan effect built entirely uh, in After Effects. Thank you for watching, I hope you learned something new and uh, found this uh, enjoyable and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!